Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode four of Everything You Love. I'm your host, Rob Arnold, and I'm so glad you're here. If you're new to the show, I'd love for you to go back and check out some of the prior episodes, get yourself caught up. And if you've been on board for a while, I'm glad to see you back. Thank you, everybody. Today's episode is going to be all about the band Machine Head and this recent controversy and headlines all about their new song and video Do or Die and how the lyrics actually mention Kamira kind of in a pissed off way. And so many people have been asking me how I feel about that. I know they've been asking Mark, the other guys in the band, everybody wants to know, is it a diss? What do we think about that? And so I'd love to share my opinion with you on that and also dive into some stories about Machine Head and our time with them on the road and really just the history of the enormous influence that Machine Head has had on Kamira's music. So we're going to talk about it all. If that sounds good, let's get right into it. Talking about Machine Head and this recent controversy they've had in the headlines about their new song, Do or Die. And what am I even talking about here? Well, in their new song, Do or Die, they they, they mention Kamira, they mention Strapping Young Lad, and Rob's really kind of, Rob Flynn, the singer of Machine Head, is, is, to me, defending himself from all these haters that have called him out saying that perhaps on their, their latest album, Catharsis, that maybe they ripped off some bands or whatever, and, and Kamira happened to be one of them. Uh, in their song, Volatile, from uh, their last album, uh, there's there's a riff in there that's like this. Da, 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 that sounds pretty darn close to Kamira's Clensation. And, of course, we were made aware of that right away. We, we heard it with our own ears when the album came out, and I don't remember any of us like being upset it was it was cool actually we i mean i took it as like a, a tip of the hat almost you know that an, an an elder band that's had so much influence on me now perhaps was indirectly influenced by my band that's 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 awesome i guarantee you nothing was intentional it just happened to be one of those things they wrote a riff thought it sounded cool and somebody says hey that sounds like this band and you, you know okay but um again no harm done there it was all good uh, and I guess there's another song where it must have sounded like some strapping young lad. And I guess they started taking some heat. Machine Head started taking some heat about that. And I guess it was enough for Rob Flynn to uh, piss him off. And uh, he's now written a song uh, in response to all these haters on Do or Die. And Kamira happens to be a focus in there. And uh, let's, let's check out some of these lyrics. This is from verse 1. I don't give a f about you haters and your hate. You assholes better duck. I'm coming, swinging out the gate. There's not a metal band I ain't influenced. Now I'm calling out the Judas. Every band's the f same. And all I hear is all you bitches commenting your chatter. Well, do it over. You hated bastards. Catharsis made you sick. Your mind is made before it hits. You didn't hear a f thing. We're not Camaro or strapping young lad. You want to hate it, but you need it so bad. This ain't just a paycheck to pay self-expression. Machine heads in my f***ing veins. So, yeah, he's, to me, he's just saying there, uh, no, man, we're machine head. We're doing our own thing. We're not Kamira. We're not strapping young lad. And I think it's all good. And I, I immediately didn't think it was a diss because I'd even heard that, that Rob Flynn uh, hit up Mark right before the song dropped just to give him a heads up. Be like, hey man, we're about to release this song. We mentioned your name in it and, um, you know, there may be some controversy about it and I just wanted you to know that this may be happening. And uh, and sure enough, everybody's hitting us up. Hey, what do you think about this? What does all this mean? And so I want to talk about that. I also wanted to point out that is this relevant right now? Will this be relevant in two weeks, two months, two years? Maybe you're watching this video five years from now, and what's the relevance of these headlines? Well, I believe what we're going to talk about here will still be relevant because it means a lot to me. It's important to me because I have so much pride in 
my love for Machine Head, my respect for them, what they've done for Kamira, the respect they've shown us, the lessons they've taught us, the experiences they've afforded us, the opportunities they've given us, the wing they've taken us under, it's incredible. And so I'm here at Machine Head's defense. I'm Team Machine Head 100%. And I'll, uh, I want to talk about that, and I hope you can get some enjoy enjoyment out of it. So yes, this will be relevant, hopefully for all time. So let's talk about some stories from the road, some cool experiences from the machine head, and talk all about that influence they've had on us. And to do that, I'd like to, once again, call in my lead correspondent, Camaro vocalist, Mr. Mark Hunter. Mark, how are you? I'm fantastic, Rob. How are you today? <laughs> Good. Was I, was I a little too energetic there, you know? No, I'm just... Mark, that's how's it going? Me. How's it going, man? Uh, no, no, that's, that's me last time, so no. I figured I'd be a little more animated this time. <laughs> cool. Well, good to have you back on. Um, just wanted to talk about this whole machine head thing. I don't know about you, but just it seems everybody's asking our opinion on that. And I've been kind of saying that, no, it's not a diss. I take it as a salute. That's what I said right away. And I thought that you had said... Um, just in a quick text, right as it happened, that that uh, Flynn actually hit you up about it and kind of like pre warned you to say, hey, this isn't going to be a diss, but this we're about to drop this song today. So um, I definitely want to hear about that. And I just want to wrap out about Machine Head because I know they were an enormous influence for Kamira. Um, and uh, talk about like one, one, how we got into them and stuff. Just quickly, my experience, I was in, in, in middle school and a buddy, at, we were at a dance. And a buddy's like, dude, you got to hear this band Machine Head. And uh, so I put his headphones on in this dance and heard um, the Burn My Eyes record. Like a few songs was, was blown away. And then we heard that they were coming to Slam Jams, which I think you said you may have attended, but I, w I wasn't able to. I don't even think I drove at this time, you know. I wasn't able to. But then I think my first time seeing them was at that, that awesome Nautica show where it was Amen, Slipknot, Second of Four, Machine Head, Coal Chamber, and then, of course doing the, the Road Rage tour with them uh, was, was t awesome. So we'll, we'll get into all that, I'm sure. But start with, um, you know, what, what, what you think about this, this whole thing that's happening right now, and then we'll lead into how you got into Machina and all that. Yeah. Well, it's definitely an interesting time for the band. I, I, sh I would say they're definitely making headlines with the song. So, man, that's marketing 101. You want people to argue over your brand because, especially when you're dropping a single, it's any press is good press. So, yeah. It's really hard to create anything that people care about in this day and age. So whether it's good or bad, I really don't have an opinion on that. Um, I'm just thankful that, yeah, we were reached out to and made aware of that the fact that the track existed and that our name was mentioned and that it wasn't a slam. It was in regards to how some of the people on the Internet said that some of their songs one of their riffs rather sounded like our riff from Clensation, and then one of their songs sounded like a Strapping Young Lad song. And, uh, yeah, to my response of that is like, man, like, I could go through each one of our songs or albums, rather, and be like, stole this from Machine Head, stole that from Machine Head. So, I mean, I think metal is one of those genres that you're just, man, you're just influenced by so many bands, and it's not that you want to necessarily rip them off, but you you may love a feeling or a vibe or even just a part that you want to like feel that way yourself right like in a, in a weird way and I'm not saying that that's how they were with our music sometimes it's subconscious it's like you write a riff and you're like oh shit that's somebody else's riff you had no idea so yeah. I mean that stuff, stuff like that happens and it's just a weird anomaly but uh you know uh Rob is always been kind to us as a band and a friend of the band and he's always been a, a mentor in a way so for him to reach out ahead of time and even share the track with us uh before it was was live was a really good gesture um and he does have respect for the band and we have respect for him as a personal uh i guess anecdote about it is like i'm flattered to have our name immortalized in a song like a lot of people know I'm a big hip hop fan, and um, it, it's not every day you hear a metal band's name in a song. So it's kind of cool to have that happen. And I think you mentioned that Pantera is like probably the only band we can think of in metal anyway where other band names are mentioned. 
So it's kind of cool. And I know that some of the people out there aren't too keen on the lyrics or anything. But man, you know, that's what Flynn feels. That's what he feels. And I'm just happy that our name is there. You know, it's kind of cool. And yeah. I'm, I'm glad it wasn't in a negative light. Yeah, I, I, I think he could have, if he wanted to, he could have said, the lyrics could have been something like, there's a chance Chimera might, may not even exist without Machine Head. He could take it that, that far, the influence they had on us. I mean, how many times we've jammed their songs early on in the practice space and um, just the influence Davidian, that, that outro, how we wanted to have those big slam and outros and everything. So we certainly borrowed and were heavily influenced by them. And if they, if they yeah, just kind of mistakenly came across a riff in that volatile song that, that sounds like Concession, it probably felt good for them in the moment. And then later on, it was... People are like, oh, it sounds like a chimera. They probably had to listen to Cleansation and be like, oh yeah, I guess it does. Oh well, it's done and everything, you know. I mean, so, <laughs> the, but the impact that Machine Head has had on us and how cool they've been over the years, please, you know, they they, they can they can do whatever they want. They could do no wrong in my eyes. And yeah, I agree. It's uh, in reference to what the Pantera song you were talking about, where he's like, your choices in whiskey and weed and Slayer. So they mentioned Slayer and then Black Sabbath, and yeah, that's the only other song we could think of where a metal band. band brings up another band's name and so yeah and I, I reread the lyrics today to um where do i see that uh oh, maybe i got rid of it but but he's like yeah he's just to all the haters out there that you didn't even like really listen to what's going on you just immediately point out that it that it must be um you know we, we we're ripping off these bands or whatever ah he his his statement was just like we're not those guys you know we're we're doing our own thing just because you thought it sounded like that you know so yeah i don't think it was any diss towards us whatsoever and but a lot of people are like coming to try to get our backs like you know like hey did, did they just diss you and sort of thing i don't think it's like that at all it's cool yeah no and i think maybe that is only thought of because uh rob's band had members leaving in a kind of a max mass exodus so that's what people were asking me was that a reference to that and i'm like no <laughs> but if it was then yeah he's still not that you know he's he he went back up and is you know doing this thing so yeah I don't, I don't take it as anything other than a song the funniest one i saw a comment was that maybe uh it was like maybe they're being literal and they're just re referencing the actual greek monster yeah huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah weird um i was thinking this morning i could be wrong about this that well, I, I know Kimura, so many people love the Kimura guitar sound and ask about it constantly. And I would say that, you know, our, our tone is derived from the PV5150 sound. And the reason that we play PV5150s is because of you. And why do you love the 5150 sound? Isn't it because of Machine Head? Yeah. Right. So yeah, I basically loved their tone. It was uh, the Burn My Eyes tone. And I, obviously we didn't have like the internet or anything back then to like verify what people used. And I had heard it through the grapevine, what he used, and, oh man, how was that? There was a bass player of a hardcore band named John Lockjaw, <laughs> and he was, uh, he knew some people in the Machine Head camp somehow, and he had, he got his hands on demos from um, the follow-up album, and I can't remember what songs it was, uh, but anyway, For the Morning Exchange, on Hammer. yeah was on there and so yeah, it was for the more things change but i don't remember which two songs but anyway he had told me that's he was a 5150 with um i want to say marshall cabs 1960s with celestia Celest 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 yeah. and um so uh that's just what i wound up trying to buy i don't know why we switched to mesa particular cabinets Mace, what's that why we switched to mesa cabinets yeah, yeah. That's another fun story that, like, that, that whole thing. I was just thinking about the other day. Actually, as I was listening to uh, Jamie on Doc's podcast, I was thinking about our early history with, with Hatebreed, how, how they were another band that kind of took us under their wing and gave us a lot of opportunities, just like Machine Head did. But that, that before we played with Hatebreed, that, uh, that eerie show one day, we had just got signed to Roadrunner. We got a big equipment budget. We went to Guitar Center and just bought all new gear and showed up to that Hatebreed show, but we didn't bring it out. But anyways, it was because we were at Guitar Center and we're like, we wanted some cabinets and stuff. We're like, here's some cabinets. These mesas look cool. And we bought them. That's why we started yeah, playing mesas. Yeah. <laughs> That's and just I think they had the same sort of like, 
similar, not same, but a kind of similar vibe with the speakers, if I'm not mistaken. I think they're just Celestion 130s. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're 130s in a in a 1960s cat. Maybe I don't recall. But, yeah, um, I don't remember anyway. But, but yeah, I remember early on in, in Camira, you being like, "This is the rig," and it was a 5150, and you had like some EQ and uh, into a Marshall cab, and you're like, "This is the rig that sounds awesome." And and I, at that time, I was just playing like crate stuff or whatever, and so it had that like electric solid state sound. I'd never heard a 5150 through a Marshall, and you ripped the chord, and I was like, "All right, sounds good. Let's get it. You know, so, <laughs> let's, let's do it." So, but again, yeah, that should rip, man. I still love that guitar tone. And and. Colin Richardson. We probably went and used Colin Richardson because of Machine Head, because we love the sound of those Machine Head records. Plus, what, artwork, maybe yeah. the manufacturer. Uh, I believe he, he produced it but didn't mix it, or one of the, yeah, no, that's what it was. But yeah, the artwork was definitely a big one, um, and the first two Machine Heads. And um, yeah, it's. I think he, he, I have a mix of Collins demanufacture. Not many people do in the world. I think me and maybe a handful of other people do. It's one of those rare things that you have to know the right people to get. But uh, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, Reese Fulber mixed it. Does it sound different? I wouldn't be able to tell you. I don't have a cassette oh, player. Right. Oh, okay. Um, well, so, <laughs> I just so have it. I have it sitting in a box. Yeah. Well, that's still cool. <laughs> I know to have. it does exist. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's cool to have. Yeah. Uh, I bet a lot of people would love to hear that. Um, so, talk about getting into Machine Head, though. Like, and did you go to that Slam Jam show, or maybe you saw them with Slayer for the first time, or something? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, both. I saw them open. Saw, bleh, saw them open up for Slayer. Yeah, in Akron, I believe Biohazard was on the tour as well. And uh, yeah, that's, I had remember having a poster in my wall so the Slayer, Machine Head, Biohazard. Machine Head would have opened, and I remember lo loving that band and. Uh, I, it was Fielding who was with me, uh, Ryan Fielding, who wound up being our guitar tech stage manager for the first couple of years of our band. Um, I just remember watching them, and I, they ended with Davidi, they opened with Davidian, and the song was over. I remember just being like, what the f? <laughs> who was that band? And uh, just loved it, and was like, remember being like, man, I want to be in a band like that, because they had, to me, it remind, reminded me they had like the groove of Pantera, the bounce of. Uh, Biohazard, the, almost that like tribal thrash of Sepultura. They had a little bit of Metallica, Metallics going on, for lack of better terms. So they just kind of were like a, 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 and they had a little bit of hip hop in them as well. So I mean, they were a little bit of everything, and that's kind of what I enjoyed about them, and that inspired me to like. Because that's kind of one of the first bands I heard in metal that kind of like bring in a whole bunch of different styles. And I like that because I had a very diverse background, whether it be just not just metal, but I also listened to at the time probably a lot of alternative music as well, like heavier grunge, Alice in Chains, stuff like that. And I could hear like elements of like all sorts of different styles within their music. So I thought it was quite interesting. And um, then later we went to see them at Slam Jams. They were, I can't remember, they must have been headlining. But uh, I just remember seeing one of the band guys. I, mean, I think it was Rob Flynn, but I don't want to say it was because if it calls him out, then I'm in trouble. But it was one of the band guys. Like he had like two chicks, like you know, coming off the bus or whatever, side by side. And remember, again, I was with Fielding. I was like, damn, I need to be definitely. We need to be on Roadrunner in this band, you know, <laughs> like because they get all the chicks. Yeah. And uh, we just had this like vision of them of like these like you know rock gods. Then after that. And then Slam Jams was interesting because that was a venue that was like a sports bar. So it'd be like seeing him at a BW3 almost. <laughs> yeah. it, it's totally weird vibe. And they it wasn't the most well-attended show. So I remember being able to sit on the stage basically while they were playing. And they did a whole bunch of cover songs, They which is something they still do to this day, which is really cool. Yeah. But uh, they remember they played like Corn. Uh, they did a little South of Heaven. And uh, and then I remember Rob dropping Wu Tang lyrics into the middle of a song, and I knew Wu Tang at the time, and Wu Tang was a pretty new band at the time, which is crazy to even think about. This is probably '94, '95, and Wu Tang like dropped in like '93, so it was really awesome for me to hear somebody in the metal world that knew underground hip hop, mm -hmm. what I perceived as underground hip hop anyway. So yeah, that that. They were just really cool to me. Like they had a little bit of different shit going on, and that that was 
probably the biggest influence was all the all the different textures coming in rather than just like, hey, we're straight thrash or we're straight yep. death metal. Yeah, like big that. influence. Uh, so in terms of their their sound, uh, their their rock and roll lifestyle, just you know, to young kids seeing guys on a bus and stuff like that, and, and you know, with chicks and gear and everything. I mean, that's that's all you want, you know, as a young musician. I want that too. I want to get to that level and stuff. But then moving forward, uh, some of my fond memories are in Kamira's early days when you and I would carpool uh, every day to practice, and you sh you were showing me bands like Mushuga and the Hatebreed, and and um, and then also I, I'm pretty sure you were like, yeah, have you heard Machine Head's new one? And we started jamming the Burning Red together, and uh -huh. uh, that was that was just a so going back to talking about that hip hop influence. Obviously, that whole thing right there was happening for new metal and had an enormous in influence on Pass Out of Existence and our vibe for that. And you, I remember you and Andals would always like jam uh, a couple of the riffs or songs um, from, from, oh, yeah. from the Burning Red. I can't remember which one. Uh, it was, um, I need to actually pull up the name of the song because I'm not really good with that stuff. Um, and then I don't want to get you a demon, uh, copyright stricken for actually singing the melody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. YouTube comes down hard on this stuff. Yeah, right. Um, no, I knew. I know one of the tracks for sure that Andals and I used to riff out on was. Um, is it Exhale the Bile? We used to play all the time, and I think Enter the Phoenix. Yeah, that one sounds familiar. Or the beat, not Enter the Phoenix, but Desire to Fire. But da, 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 da. So that, that beginning, if I'm not mistaken, I'm feeling to call me out on it, but that's how they opened the show I saw them with Slayer was the beginning of Desire to Fire. Mm -hmm. And it was like this bounce riff. That Is that... Something like that. Um, yeah, so that but, that... but that record, so many great songs really cool infusion of rock and metal. I'm sure they took a lot of heat for that style, their style changing, like in their appearance, oh, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But all that was happening right then. And all those bands like Spine Shank and everything all had that like weird hair look and all that. Um, but so anyways, big influence, things going cool. Then we get the tour, Fear Factory, Machine Head, and then two baby bands, Us and El Nino, how awesome that was. Um, so set up that timeline. <laughs> what, what was that called? I just remember, like, and, and, yeah, I remember our both our albums were coming out. Machine Head had Supercharger coming out, and we had Pass Out of Existence coming out, which, wow, now we're at eight, about 18 years ago right now, because that was October 2nd, so we would have been on that tour with them 18 years ago. <laughs> and because um, I remember buying our albums. Flynn and I, yeah. went, I think Mezgarth maybe took us. Somebody took us to the mall, Shout and we were in Mezgarth. Detroit. And... Um, yeah, that's. I remember buying that, and so I remember my first impression of seeing them live that night, opening night. We were in was it Wisconsin? Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, Duluth. we were in Wisconsin. Duluth. Wisconsin. Right? Yeah, probably. That's that's a Minnesota Duluth. Oh, uh -huh. it, we did play Duluth with them though. That was that was the stage where like. There was absolutely no room, and both bands were like refusing to strike their drum risers each night, and they both yeah, had yeah. massive drum risers. Oh yeah, there was a lot of ego on there. I, I didn't didn't oh, they, have, they have to make so much ego. didn't they have to put some like makeshift like plywood up? We're, weren't like you and I yeah. standing on plywood just so there was yeah. room at the front of the stage behind these two drums? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally getting <laughs> by every band. But anyway, uh, the first night of the tour. I just remember Machine Head having so many technical problems, and this the, their tech just couldn't get together, and Rob just couldn't get his guitar working. Oh, yeah. And here I was, like, oh my god, we're playing Machine Head, I can't wait, opening night, you know, crowds packed, and man, it was a train wreck for that band. And I was just like, oh, like it's one of those things where you're watching a car crash repeatedly into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> just like, you felt so bad for them. And then I just kind of like was realized like, man, like we're all human. Even like the big bands can go through like a sh attack and yeah. have a nightmare. Like we didn't think it was reflective of the band. It was obviously their crew. And I don't think we saw that crew guy ever again after that. And it may after, not have even like, been his fault. It was the first day, you know, there's a lot yeah, to get yeah, together. Yeah. Like here, set up all this gear and, you know, just yeah. know all my settings and how I want my rig done. And all. I mean, that's, it's a lot. Yeah, I remember things. Flynn had like probably five or six pedals too on the yeah. ground. And the guy, you just see the guy <laughs> trying all these different cables. And it's just so funny to think about that stuff. But uh, 
yeah, that was that was my big two biggest memories were buying our albums together, and I was excited because he bought ours. Yeah, and uh, so I thought, whoa, you know, like holy shit. like in 1998 or whatever, or 94. When was that tour? It would have been '94. I was like, "Whoa!" And then there you are, six years later, seven, seven years later, playing with them and the dudes buying your album. That's pretty huge. Yeah, watching a dream unfold, you know, like uh, become a reality. So that's awesome. And then, and then after that tour, you know, we'd come around. I think, I think maybe the impossible. Yeah, it had to have been around the impossibility of reason era where we would come through uh, for San Francisco. And so the Machine Head guys would come out and hang out and started introducing us to Brown Eyes. Well, they probably we were probably drinking Brown Eyes on that first tour too, but you know that's when, oh yeah, there's a scene in the dehumanizing process where Rob's up on on the RV or the bus, whatever it was, and uh, we're making Brown Eyes. So they'd come and see us and 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 hang out and totally cool. And then the tour in 2004 where we we're, we're co-headlining with those guys which i still can't believe like i like i that's like a, we're not worthy type of thing but you know Flynn and those guys they're ride or die guys i think they had a slow point after supercharger getting off roadrunner then what was the next album ashes or something so they were trying to rebuild and and they humbled themselves and and shared co-headlining duties with us i guess the band coming up and everything but still it was like wow i can't believe some nights machine head is going before us just didn't feel worthy but what a great tour that was too fun time yeah, well, i remember eating so many awesome chicken wings like they were we always did barbecue grilling yeah, like, that's every right day. deuce deuce would, would, would yeah. grill every day right yeah and that's where we got into that yeah we got way into cooking the, on tour because of them more likely yeah i found and uh, we used to cook all the time when we after that I think that was more uh, like outdoor stuff, right? But then we started bringing like the George Foreman grills on the bus and we'd have the skillet and cooking all the time. Yeah, the bus would always smell like bacon. <laughs> I remember too that one time we were on tour with somebody and, and Spine Shanks first. Remember the first tour we did with Spine Shanks and they had that merch girl and she brought us a crock pot full of food one time. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, what a brilliant idea totally crock pot on a bus yeah you save all this money you can buy a giant roast or whatever you're into yeah then then a, a couple totally. of bus companies would advertise that they'll that they have crock pots and that they'll, the, the driver will have soup and, and fresh bread waiting for you in the bread maker in the morning i remember that yeah, every yeah. driver was lazy they'd do it like the first day and then after that it never happened again you know but but no. still i got way into making bread on that tour there's not waking up to the smell of fresh bread is an experience <laughs> yeah. i mean it's it's amazing right. you know Absolutely. But so yeah, I came across this. There, uh, you see that this is a uh, a tour book for only only certain tours you get tour books on. You know, and this was a cool one. And uh, you know, for those of you that don't know, it just kind of has all the information, like the personnel, of the tour, uh, phone numbers, all that, and then just what every day, where you're going to be at, what the hotel is going to be, um, all the different things you need there, and everything. Pretty cool though to to read through this and see it. So like, I I didn't even. Think, oh yeah, Ricky was our drummer on that tour, on this uh, 2004 Road Rage tour. Huh. So you just see the personnel. Richie was our driver. I didn't realize we had Richie all the way back then. Um, so yeah, fun times there. And then something really cool, um, which is, this is a letter that the Flynn gave me personally, and he gave us each one that I wanted to share here that um, would is, is just another way to show that there's no way Rob could have been dissing us in this song because, you know, the, the, the friendship is too strong and he has too much respect for us. This is addressed, it's uh, September 5th of 2004. So this would have been, uh, I guess, the last day of this tour, August 3rd to September 5th there. And uh, it's addressed to The Secret Guy, which uh, that was his nickname for me, I guess, because I just kept to myself or... You know, a lot, and being another Rob on the tour, you know, it's better to have a nickname since so it's not two of us. But um, so this says to the Kamira boys, it is a rare and unique privilege to tour with a band that you can become friends with. It is even a rare occasion to tour with a band whose music you actually enjoy and relate to. This tour has been both. To say it has been an honor would be a huge understatement. I am a fan of both Kamira the band and Kamira the human beings. You inspire me. This has been one of the funnest, down-to-earth, rocking good times we've had on tour, and I'm glad the six of you came into and crossed paths with my life. I wish you all nothing but the best and hope our paths cross sooner rather than later. 
In closing, I'd like to leave you with some words of inspiration that I took to in times of doubt, which are probably more often than you might think. May these same words inspire you as they have inspired me. My friends, the general. And this is a, an inauguration speech from Nelson Mandela who says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are born to make manifest the glory that is within us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give the other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So what's so special about this is, is a personal letter from Rob Flynn saying that we inspire him and just give him the pound to our friendship and stuff like that. Who would have thought back after that middle school dance that I attended or you seeing them live saying, I want to do this, that we'd get a letter like this, um, which you probably still have yours and the other guys have theirs. How cool is it uh, for this to have happened and to, to receive a personal letter? What other band has given you a personal letter after a tour? You know, never. It's just such a cool thing. Rob, boom, awesome stuff. Except I don't want him to ever bite my head again. <laughs> Tell us about that. Tell us about that. He always <laughs> bites your head when you're partying with him. He uh, like literally skull bites you, puts his teeth into your skull and bites. He's uh, never done that to you. I, I, I don't think so. I, I don't remember being big. But now that you bring it up, I, I do kind of remember. Wouldn't you guys have like, what was it, Monday Night Moshes or something? Yeah, and yeah. Just Monday Night Mosh. I remember, yeah, I remember crowd surfing. Uh, All this was it? on the bus. On the bus, yeah. yeah we, we would have mosh pits and like I remember crowd surfing bus to bus with Flynn. <laughs> yeah. like, like so keep up, keep, yeah, keep up. Keep and we went from like yeah. one one bus back lounge to the other bus back lounge and then threw them into the <laughs> into the guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fun stuff, good times. Any other experiences, memories you could share? Well, something that I, I tweeted about, but probably not a lot of people know, especially that'll that'll be watching this because they might not follow me on Twitter. Bling. Got it. Uh, but uh, the uh, when we were working on the self-titled album, um, I basically started kind of paying more and more attention to my lyrics and understanding the importance of the words I was saying. Whereas before, a lot of it was either personal stories of growing up or uh, just words that I thought maybe sounded cool over, over the cadence or whatever. And whereas self-titled, I was really trying to like become a better lyricist. And especially too, man, we were, we were in the era of message boards kind of being a new thing where you can actually see, see real time criticism, even from your own fans. It's not like I was trying to go on message boards of, you know, uh, whoever to read about us. But if it was our own message board and you can see criticism from fans, I took a lot of that to heart. I remember, cause it was a new thing too. Like now it's like, you see that kind of stuff. It just blows off the blows off you. But, um, the, uh, back then I was like, man, I, I just need to, you know, do a little better so I could, because I didn't disagree with some of the critiques. That would probably be the most important thing to say about it. It's not like they got under me and I'm like, oh, I need to change it for them. It was more or less like, yeah, you're right. The criticism was constructive. Yeah, it was <laughs> constructive. So, um, yeah. So anyway, long story short, I asked Rob if I could send him some of the lyrics as I was working on them to see if, because I considered him to be a, a really well-renowned lyricist. And then at, at that point, we're friends, you know. So, um, yeah, I did that, and he, he got back to me on a bunch of stuff and was really cool and, again, constructive and, and helped me unlock some of the puzzles I had going on. And, um, yeah, and then he actually asked me to do that on their album, one of their albums as well. And uh, so that was a really cool feeling, and it was a kind of behind-the-scenes thing that really not many people know. But it was just more or less like, hey, check this over, and 
you know, give it a once over. What do you think? Yeah. You know, in the right path. Like, does it look good? It, you know, does it strike you even though you're not hearing it to music? Does it, you know, all that kind of stuff that I was trying to get. And the one he really helped me with was Lazarus. So Lazarus is a song on the last, the last song of our self-titled where um, that song in particular is about a friend of Jim, Jim and, and mine that we grew up with who, who committed suicide. And he was the drummer of Jim's band, who then I, after he died, I replaced. So we have a long history. It's kind of like my journey to that, even to that point. A lot of it begins with him. And when he passed, he had left a letter. The only thing that he had wrote was the name Lazarus. So it was kind of just this cryptic, creepy thing. But anyway, I was working on it. And um, at first, I was like holding back a lot of like, I guess, being, being too vague, I suppose. So that's why you'll hear like specifics in the song, like the dates, like 11-5-94. And are those so things those kind of, been recommended? Be more yeah. specific. Be, yeah. yeah, being very specific about it and like visceral, but like I was being too vague. I could be vague, but I can be specific. And it was just kind of like helping me get out of that little box I was kind of putting myself into. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, I don't remember that I had much criticism for him. He's just you know good at that stuff. So again. Now we'll probably get flamed because people don't care for his lyrics these days. <laughs> We're sitting just like, hey, man. But hey, I ain't into all that. Like, I just like Machine Head for being Machine Head. And like, to me, Rob's been Rob throughout this t- entire time we've known him. So I have nothing bad to say, nothing but love. And I thought the new song was heavy. So Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I, I think it rocks. I'm actually, I was pleasantly surprised not surprised isn't the right word but I, w- I was pleased that uh that they're still just jamming and rocking after all this time he just took that big hit with all the member changes um, yeah. and and to just come back like that's why i said earlier he's he's a ride or die guy and just works 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 and uh, there's a, a lot of things throughout throughout his career that that could have stopped him or he could have thrown in the towel but he's kept going and to deliver quality music here i, I think the the video and the song rocks you know uh the do or die and Looking forward to seeing these guys in the upcoming tour, watching them do the uh, the anniversary show over in my eyes. That's going to be killer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if, if Flynn, now if you ever check check this out, I'm probably going to hit you up for some guest list passes. So. Yeah, yeah. Make sure, you, make sure you hook up your boys now that you dissed us on your album. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Hey, well, with that, <clears throat> we will officially say that uh, Machine Head's track, Do or Die, has the blessing from the Kamira boys, right? Absolutely. So, and uh, yeah, we wish Machine Head well, and thank you for all their influence. And uh, yeah, there, it's settled. No problems from Kamira. Thanks, Mark. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, man. All right, well, that was cool. And I'd like to thank Mark again uh, for, for coming on and spending some time with us to talk about Machine Head. And I hope you gathered from that that there's there's no dis, no disrespect, no harm, no foul. I have and I'm always going to have a tremendous amount of love for Machine Head and I wish those guys the best. All the ex-guys that I had the pleasure of, of jamming with, Phil Demmel, Dave McLean, Adam Deuce. And I know Rob's got a, a great new group of guys out there playing with him where they're doing the uh, Burn My Eyes anniversary tour. Make sure you check out their new album as soon as you can. I can't wait to check that out as well. Yeah, just... Thanks again. Thanks again to Machine Head and all you've done for Kamira. Cheers to you guys. You've got our blessing and always will. And yeah, I think that's uh, just going to about do it. I'm going to wrap this one up here. Uh, episode 5, I'm going to get back to answering all your questions, so that'll be fun. I still got a boatload of great questions, and I want to get back to that. And finally, I have a Patreon campaign. If you didn't know about it, you can check that out and see some behind-the-scenes footage of me creating these videos, uh, as well as get access to some exclusive downloads uh, that I have available up there, and I plan on adding more all the time. Uh, And you can also get involved in in my videos and my productions and my music in a special way. So that sounds cool. Go ahead and check out patreon.com slash Rob Arnold World. Don't forget to follow me on all the socials. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to comment something great. Thanks again, everybody, for spending the time. 
Hope to see you soon on episode five, where I plan to get back to answering your questions. I'm going to dedicate that episode completely to answering the boatload of questions I still got, some great questions, and I can't wait to answer them. Thanks again, everybody. Cheers. See you soon. Jim, what's happening? uh, So any cool machine head memories you have? Any stories you could tell quickly? And then anything you want to say to the guys? Um, Yeah. remember finishing the set at the uh, the tour that we did with Trivium and uh, Machine Head. I remember finishing the set and asking Dave McLean if I could finish the set out playing drums. Like, right when it was like the last note when he was doing all the brrrr. So I would yeah. do that and all of a sudden he would, uh, it would be, uh, you know, like the guys looking like the first night they were looking back like, what the hell, like doesn't sound right. Who's like, playing drums? Me, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm playing drums. And yeah. they look back and they see me and they're like, what the hell, like, you know, that was just like a, like a cool experience. What song was it? I want to say, I think it was Davidian, I think. I think it was Davidian, but right it was on. the end of the set, so cool. then it was like, it was a cool, cool thing. So you've played Dave McLean's set and played live with Machine Head. Correct. <laughs> awesome. Anything you want to say to Rob and the boys are coming to town soon? Um, if I can get off work, I'll be at the show. All right.